What's going on, everybody? How y'all doing today? This shit got Joe Martin checking in. A little bit under the weather. But um, for the last week, I've been checking out this YSL case with uh, Thugger. You know, and I'm praying for them boys, man. Um, it could have been any of us in that situation. So, you know, um, my honest opinion is I feel like the judge is a little biased. I do feel like the judge is biased. Uh, but let's check out this real quick. We're going to check this out. Let's see. Let's go. She has not put that on record for purposes of, uh, of posterities, but she's ready to do that this time, okay? We're ready, Michael. Yes, ma'am. Go right ahead. Your Honor, as it relates to Mr. Tinquarius Mender, Mr. Mender is charged with count one of the indictment, conspiracy to violate the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act, which carries a sentence of five to 20 years. He's also charged with count 44 of the indictment, which is possession of a weapon by, by an incarcerated individual, which carries a sentence of one to five years. Count 45, possession of a telecommunication device by an incarcerated individual, which carries a sentence of one to five years. And last, count 46, which is participation in criminal street gang activity, which carries a sentence of five to 20 years. I got an email from this company called Unison, and they were like, yo, check out, check out this MIDI chord pack. I said, nah, I don't... I don't. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Mender is an ANC recidivist. The state did file a recidivist notice on December 9th of this year. Um, if Mr. Shout out Mender to the Law and Crime Network on all the counts of the indictment, he'd be looking at a maximum exposure of 50 years to serve in prison. It, and now, could you explain the difference, I think, for Ms. I'm sure that Ms. Fagan has probably explained that to his her client. But can you tell Mr. for the benefit of the record and for Mr. Mender's benefit, what potentially may happen if he were to be convicted of any of these particular counts? Like what would, uh, under A or C? Yes, um, if he's um, convicted of any of the counts, um, as an ANC recidivist, Mr. Mender, you would have to get the maximum amount on um, for that charge. And then whatever time the court gives you, which if it was to be the maximum, you have to spend every day door to door. He Which means no, you have to spend every day in custody. He had no good time. No. It's, it's a to-the-door sentence. Yes, he would get any credit for a time served. Of but, course, yeah, absolutely. But anything else would be um, a full sentence door-to-door. -door. Um, so his max is 50 years? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and what's the state's offer? Yes, Your Honor, the state's um, offer for Mr. Mender as to count one is 16 years to serve one year, committed to time served, with a balance of 15 years on probation, um, the state would offer that his probation could be terminated upon successful completion of the first 10 years of this sentence, provided that he violated no provisions of the agreement or no special conditions of the agreement, and that he violates no law of the state of Georgia. As to count 44, the state's recommendation is five years to serve one year, commuted to time served, with a balance um, to be served on probation, concurrent with count one. As to count 45, it would be five years to serve one year, commuted to time serving confinement, I mean, excuse me, commuted to time served, followed by four years on probation, concurrent with counts one and 44. And count 46 would be 16 years to serve one year, commuted to time served, followed by 15 years on probation, concurrent with count one, 44, and 45. Um, would be the offer. Uh, Mr. Mender also is currently probation. on another indictment, 21 SC 178250. In this case, um, as a part of the as a part of the agreement, would run concurrent with that case when whenever he resolved that other case, Your Honor. Is that before me or before another division? It is in this division currently, Your Honor. And that's being handled by um, ADA Lauren Jansen. Yeah, he's not state. going. Nah, he ain't going. Does he have bond on that case ending in two five zero? 
I don't believe he has a bond on that case. No, he, he does not. No, I was looking no at it. This, this dude right here. But on this case, he would he, he went ahead and pled guilty. Today. Correct. But, if he was but, given a bond, he would. This case, Mender, he, he would not have served any jail time on this right. case. Okay. And that offer will also conclude today, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Fagan, have you communicated that to your client um, in terms of the, is that to correctly summarize the plea agreement or the potential plea offer, I should say? The only change was that he wasn't aware of the concurrent status for the second case. At this time, though, he still maintains a not guilty plea. Sure. Respectfully requests, um, rejects the offer, and we announce ready for trial. Pause it real quick. I, I just feel like it's all a trap, you know. Um, even if those boys do plead guilty and they give them 15 years probation, you know, any little minor incident that they run into going to land them right back in front of the judge, you know, and eventually the state going to get what they want anyway, which is inmates, you know, prisoners you know that's all that's all it's about man it's just about modern day slavery and um i just keep telling people like i'm I'm trying to figure out like what if this guy really feel like he innocent you know what if he just had a job um and he didn't partake in none of the things that's going on uh what were allegedly going on um do he still just say guilty? You know, I, I just don't get it. Okay, Mr. Mender, I'll tell you and I'll tell Mr. Beebe and Mr. Stevens the same thing, okay? At this point, you have the absolute right to plead not guilty, and that's what the law will presume, and the court will, um, of course, instruct that you have a presumption and uh, the presumptions and protections you enjoy as a criminal accused. You have to decide for yourselves what you want to do in this particular case. Um, depending upon the results or, or, or the, the outcome of the trial. The only thing I would tell you, um, Mr. Mender, is the, the most, and I'm sure that Ms. Fagan, she's a very fine attorney, seen her work. But trials, there, there's one thing about trials, it's uncertainty. You don't know what's going to happen. So, Judge just seemed like he's trying to persuade the man counts. to plead guilty. If you don't beat them, what will happen is under this A and C recidivist statute, you, I have to, under the law, sentence you to the maximum See, sentence. Scare tech. And then whatever I sentence you to, you serve to the de to the door. That's not anything I have any discretion over. It's not anything because I don't like you or because of what you're being charged with or whatever. Those have nothing to do with anything. That's what the state of Georgia, the legislature, has mandated that I sentence you to. So one. I feel like the judge bias, uh, this particular judge was a prosecutor, you know, um, before he was a judge, he was a prosecutor. So his whole mindset and mentality is all on prosecuting. You know, if it was a defensive judge, I think he'll probably have a different mindset or he might have a different approach towards this situation. But, um, uh, when he was an attorney, he was a prosecutor. So that's what mine said he got. And it just kind of feels like, it seems like he's persuading this guy to plead guilty. One of the things that he does is it, you know what you're getting. It caps your exposure. So, and what the state's telling you today is if you take the plea today, this is what you're going to get. And this is what I probably sentence you to. And you're done. You gotta decide that for yourself. You can't be worried about it. Planning a family? Check your sperm count. Yeah, it just seemed like the judge in your room. pushing Morning, that guilty night, on the afternoon. Man. Like, say you Upstairs, guilty, just say you guilty. Here and there. But I just but keep please, saying, what if dude I don't, don't, don't feel like he's guilty anywhere. for real? Home sweet home. Don't be worried about any of these other folks that are attached, attached to this indictment because. A plea is individual to that particular person for those particular reasons that he or she, he or she feels uh, is, is of best interest to them, not anybody else. 
So if you want a couple minutes out to talk with Ms. Fagan about that, nobody will be the wiser, and uh, certainly, but if you don't wish to do so, that's fine too. You'll get the fairs trial that the law demands and expects you to get. You will get that. I ain't gonna give them no fair trial. I, as a trial judge, will make sure that that occurs. But one of the things I cannot do is I can't force the state at the end of trial to pull this recidivist notice. If you get convicted, they can maintain it, and you'll serve every day of it. See? And Ms. Fagan so can ask them to pull it, persuade, and they can say no. I, persuade them to I can't make them guilty. do that. So you got a lot to think about. So yeah, you do. I'll give you a few more minutes to, 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 to ponder that. Because that is, when they follow a recidivist notice, that is, that they, they have basically, in poker terms, they've called. Like, what do you want to do? <clears throat> so, I'll let you think about that, and you can let me know. And if not, then we'll see you next week for trial. Um, Mr. Beatty, where are you? Here, y'all. This little brother uh, right here looks so young. We would reject the state's offer as provided on record, Your Honor. However, uh, Mr. Beatty would ask the court if the court would hear a non negotiated plea as to the indictment. I would. If that's the case, Judge, uh, Mr. Beatty would then ask if he does not agree with your honor's sentence, would the court allow him to withdraw the plea and proceed to trial? Um, I need to think about that for just a second, okay? Understood. Just give me a minute, okay? Thank but you. yes, that's more than fine. Thank you. Mr. Beatty, you got the same kind of, uh, same discussion I had with Mr. Um, with, with Mr. Mender applies to you, but let me just get back with you in just a second, okay? Mr. Stevens, where are you? Man, lit young black man sitting in front of the judge fighting for their life, you know, and it just seems like the judge is pushing guilty on them, you know, it's crazy. Okay, um, madam, are you still talking to your client? Uh, yes, Your Honor, I'm actually still exchanging text messages with the state. So okay, I'm going to gonna take a couple of minutes out and let you all continue to chat. Thank I'm going to just take a uh, recess, and um, I'll come back in just a minute, okay? Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, you're very welcome. All right. Yeah, man, it's crazy. Um, matter of fact, I was looking up Mender the other day. I just was kind of checking out some things, and uh looked like bro used to play football. Here go some of his highlights. Went to Carver High School, Atlanta, number nine, outside linebacker, fullback. This was 2015, so this was seven years ago. Highlights. <clears throat> 